the stream will be starting in about one minute. So I'm not making that huge mistake I made last time about starting five minutes early and trying to fill with powder. I only have to fill approximately uh, 43 seconds with powder. Um, so it's cold in Albuquerque today. How cold is it? Well, it's cold. That wasn't really funny, but then again, it wasn't supposed to be. Okay, I would like to thank... Uh, apparently, I'm not even in chat myself, even though I actually am in chat. Um, so we'll get started shortly here. Um, in about 16 seconds. I don't know why I wait. No one really ever shows up. You know, I schedule like three minutes in advance, and somehow people have better things to do than to drop what they're doing on three minutes' notice and, and watch me. But anyway. Okay, um, let's get started. I would like to apologize again last time for uh, having to cut the stream short due to medical reasons. Uh, this time I have uh, checked my blood sugar. It's doing fine. I should not go hypoglycemic on this stream. Of course, I could have a heart attack or die in some other horrible way, but, you know, you can't have everything. So the, the hypoglycemia is out, everything else might be in. Okay, last time we talked about uh, encapsulating our maps, so each map would have its own data separately. And I believe we looked at, um, the, the, when I had done this in Perl, the code I'd written to sort of keep, for example, the land use map separate from the climate map, which we haven't seen yet, or we haven't really looked at yet, population count map. Popu there's a lot of other maps we have, and each map has its own set of information. Um, and then we also looked at this file because we have some more information in here and we actually want to combine the pieces of information we have. And let me see if I could um, find where we... I guess over here we don't really have a lot of... Here it is. Um, here's some other information. Well, no, that's actually the request data, sorry. Yeah, that's right, it's commented out. Um, so this here, it's still hard to see, um, is, is some, you know, some information about the land use map. Uh, so you might think today we're going to look further into that, but that would be too easy, so the answer is no, we're not going to do that. The one question you could ask is, suppose we actually get this data server up and running, and if we do, the URL is going to look something like this one here. Uh, I'm just bringing it up in full page mode. Um, and we're getting all this good stuff. Oh, wow, it's going to install the packages and everything again. But the question is, can we actually request data from it? I mean, right now, it's a single URL. Can we send it? Now that is some bizarre stuff. Um, so the question is, can, well, first of all, the question is, can we run it at all? Apparently not. Uh, but the second question is, if we could run it, uh, could we send data to it? Could we request data from it uh, using either the, you know, the get or post methods? Uh, because a single URL is not going to help us much. So I'm going to try running this again, and if that happens again, I think I know what's wrong. I think we're doing console logs where we shouldn't be doing them, and somehow they're coming out uh, into the, trying to print on the screen. And wow, um, not good. Okay, and I think we actually have a, a kill in here somewhere. We have a, a die, which of course doesn't really die, but, but does something close to that. Okay, um, function, function... Let's try running it over here and see what happens. And here it has to do its updates with the NPM. I don't really know why it's doing this. Okay, so it does that, and the question is, does it actually come to an end? And it actually it's, should stay in the loop. So let me see why it's coming to an end here. So we're loading in the libraries. We are getting some data, which is the data that's being printed here. We then open words.txt. Um, Hmm. Okay. So it should not stop because JavaScript runs an infinite loop, and yet somehow I've broken that infinite loop. So let me just put a console log here and make a reference to the Energizer Bunny, who probably no one remembers. And okay, so it is still going here. So the, the theory here is. Um, we should still, we should not have ended, the loop shouldn't end there. Um, the only issue I see is maybe it doesn't like the fact that we're console logging to something. But that shouldn't kill it. I mean, and if it does, it should be dead after the first one. Uh, the REPL has exited. Okay. Okay, so we're going to use a little bit of a cheat here. Um, 
Let me try it with just after 100, which is 100 millisec uh, milliseconds, so that shouldn't be too long. Um, see what that does. If that works, we're going to increase the after to a big, much bigger number, so it just... No, it didn't like that. Um, just like that. If it, Oh, there we are. That looks better. Okay. So let's see what the after signature looks like. Oh good, it's not going to tell us. Oh, is it something like... And if this doesn't work, of course, we will take the uh, drastic step of actually looking at the documentation. Okay. Should be enough. Okay, and that, this might actually be helpful because it's going to tell us how to I'll build our own web server here, so maybe we need to do all of this here too. Um, and we can't just rely on the fact that it's going to run in an infinite loop, which is kind of sad. And also, I keep forgetting that uh, on this browser I have it set so that uh, the search replaces what's already in the browser, which is a, a bad thing. Um, I do need to fix that at some point, but not right now. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, so it looks like here we might actually have to do some uh, uh, HTTP server running, and I'm pretty sure this is just going to be end of port or something for uh, Replit. We won't actually be running the final servit server um, on Replit, but, um, but it would be good to get a test version running on Replit. Um, now what bugs me about this is I think we don't, if we run this it'll go into an infinite loop, which I do not want. I mean, I don't want an infinite loop uh, because we won't be able to edit. Well, we might be actually able to stop it and then go again. Um, okay, so let's just cut and paste this, see if it works. And then we can try to visit it and see what happens. And let's see. Let's see if this even runs. And apparently it has to update itself again. Um, oh yeah, we need to get rid of this piece of crap that's down here. Let's try it now and see if it starts up a web server for us. Very nice. Well, not really. We'll just see what's going on now. So now, let's look at this and see what happens. Connecting, installing path. Again, this probably is not what should be happening. Um, because this looks like it's trying to run the server itself instead of being a server that listens on a port. Uh, yeah, so this actually just starts the server, which we don't really want. Um, I'm pretty sure that if we do this, it won't work either. But... Um, but, uh, well, hang on. Something seems to be happening. And... Okay. So we're going to need to go a little bit deeper into this, which is... Um, and again, this is not super useful, because we're not going to really use Replit as our final server. Um, but it might be... Oh, no, not Replit. Replit. Oh. And here it is, not very, uh, not very difficult. Uh, we provide templates for Node, Sinatra, and any other function, as any, the port can be opened. Um, so this is, um, this is how we do it on Python. Um, okay. And that's not very helpful. Um, so let's throw in using Node.js. See what that does. 
Oh, here it is. This actually looks like it's, it's fairly promising. Uh, let's see. Okay. So running. Undefined just happens to be the return value for things like this. Uh, then we go over here, but this is not going to do what we want. And we think we just make this HTTP. Connecting. Now the question is, how do we actually listen to the server? Okay, great. Well, let's try 8081, see what happens. Yeah. So I guess the question is, if we create it, uh, how do we actually look at it? And I don't think um, what I'm doing here is the correct thing to do. It is freezing. So let's, I guess we need to now know, after you run it, after you create a web server and start running it, what do you do next? Um, and that maybe is something that we will connecting. Okay. So. Okay, okay, okay. So now the question, of course, is how do you get a client to connect to a Node.js server running on Replit? Because that's not very useful otherwise. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. It works with localhost in my... Anytime I make Node.js for Replit just doesn't seem to work out. Well, that's, that's not promising. Um... Um, hmm. Let's see. Um, well, it looks like he's done it himself on Replit. Let's see what happens here. So this looks Replit waking up, blah, 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 blah. Mm, clearly not a production sort of thing we're doing here. It's taking forever to wake up. Wow. So this might be an idea we need to jump pretty quickly. Um, sort of ugly because at some point we would like to know how to connect to... Oh, here we go. Port opened. <coughs> and, uh, well... Yeah, it looks like it, it does work. So I guess what happens is you go to this URL. This is still really sort of confusing. Well, okay, maybe it's not that confusing. So apparently you go to the um, the, uh, the the page and <sighs> the replit's not supposed to close. Well, let's see. I guess it's because if you're running in a run, well, should, there should be an infinite loop running regardless, though. And the problem here is, um, rather, here is, aside from the fact that it's not secure, uh, no, we actually want, wow. Right, so here's his, uh, when you run this, it apparently starts up a web server somehow. Um, it's not even really that many lines of code, so app listen. Hmm. So let's go back to my version here. Um, does he run his on 127.001? Get rid of some of these things we don't need. Oh, apparently he does not specify an IP address. Uh, I don't know if that'll actually work, though. So we don't care about the... Well... 
Oh, oh, you know what? I don't think we need the uh, the host. The host name is not actually used anywhere, uh, except to print out that it's running. Um, I suppose it's possible that the, uh, the the host is actually running on my my own machine somehow, um, which seems odd because I don't think Replit has that power, but maybe it does. No, it's not running something. Well, let's go ahead and uh, see. It's running now, actually. So this um, so this is actually somewhat strange. So if we go to this Twitch uh, data server, it's installing some packages, it's going to run, and it's going to come to a dead halt. And don't worry, we will stop pursuing this line if this doesn't start working soon, which it appear apparently will not. Okay. Oh! It's very nice. Okay, so now it's not di dying. Um, so now, the question is, can we give it get data? like set foo equal to bar. It will take apparently forever each time, but that's that's okay because it's not going to be in production. Now if we do this, the question is first of all, will it run the correct replit, which hopefully it will. And the second question is how do we get this foo equals bar out of the uh, out of the get parameter? And ultimately we'll probably want to use a post parameter because we want to send JSON requests and JSON's kind of ugly if you just send it on the... Um... Alright, so there it is. Um... Great. So now all we need to do is Node.js read get request or get parameters is actually pretty good too. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not. This is in PHP. Um, Rec URL, so so we're gonna need a little bit more here. This is uh, oh, actually, when someone connects, it's supposed to send "Hello World." Um, now this, if I do this, uh, actually, I don't know what'll happen, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, Once it's actually caught up into this sort of uh, the sort of loop here, it should never actually reach anything. Well, no, that's not true because the job is asynchronous. Um, yeah, this might be too ugly, undefined. So these are just console logs. Now let me see if I can do a little bit. I'm going to download this first to be safe. I'm going to comment out the rest of the code and just do this sort of sa sample code they gave us and um, see what happens. And I might... No, I can't even do that because I have a... It would be nested there. Okay. So let's go crazy here and just control exit briefly. We will reestablish that sh stop it run it again that's not good well exit it terminated but it still hasn't stopped so maybe now if we go over here do this yeah we, we're going into a hell hole here So I think we will have to, um, yeah. It's running, but when we connect to it, it's not doing anything. So I'm going to bring back our existing code before and get rid of this this code. And we're going to pretend like that didn't happen. But it did. Okay, so instead, let's go back to looking at our, our maps and seeing if we can, uh, we can get some uh, calculations done here. Um, at some point, of course, we will have an issue that... Um, We'll, you know, we, we can use standard input, we can use any variety of techniques for testing, but at some point we're going to have to figure out how to get, get it so that it can respond to incoming HTTP requests. Okay, um, so what we're going to do here 
is we're going to try to combine our sample code from Perl, not combine, but sort of notify it so that it can so that it can be in um, it can be in our JavaScript code and our Node code. Um, again, I'm going to cheat and use this sort of eval fs read file sync stuff going on here, and I'm going to call this um, maps.js. And it's really data maps, not real maps, but whatever, you know. And we're going to copy from here the stuff we want for land use, which is the only thing we, we care about for right now. And it won't work as is, obviously, because this is a Perl code and we're trying to write JavaScript code. But that's okay, because we will change it. And from over here, I think we had, we don't have to, they're, they're not going to play well together, we don't have to combine them. Um, and here I called it maps meta, because uh, it's really metadata about the maps, but whatever. All right, so now let's see if we can combine these to, um, so the first thing we need to do is declare maps to be an array. And then we're going to say the land use is going to be an object. Uh, file name is going to be, where am I putting it? Am I putting it at the top level? I am, which is a bad idea, but we'll leave it there. So that's where we find the data. Um, now, actually, let me make the single quotes to be consistent across the board. Now, you might wonder why we're calling it raster, since that's the only kind we have right now. We will have other kinds of maps later, so we might as well say this is going to be raster. We're not going to put in a description. Um, we're going to use, instead of um, byte, or instead of size, we're going to say bit size. And that's going to be 8. In other words, each chunk of data takes up 8 bits. So, uh, let's see what else. Source, we're not going to add a source. It does have one, but we're not going to add it. I think that takes us through everything here. Type, size, description, processing, doesn't, we don't care. Um, right, and then the, um, the northmost data point is not 90. It's 90 minus one half the latitude resolution, but it is okay to say that it's 90. The south data, it's okay to say, these are all in degrees, minus 90. The west data is minus 180. The east data is plus 180. And then we're going to say the longitudinal resolution. Okay, now in this case, this is, um, let me just see what that actually is. That's one over something large. And I think it's 43. That's not what I expected. That's one over 360. Um, so that would be six seconds of arc. So actually, I think that is um, 129,600. We do not have that kind of resolution here. Uh, because our smaller map is only 8192, our longitudinal resolution will be 360 degrees over those 800,192 pixels. And our latitudinal resolution will be the same. We'll just write it as this, but this happens to be the same number. OK, so now we have this. And now, probably bad, bad format here. I'm going to actually um, write the fun. Well, let's see. Am I? Yeah, I am. I'm going to write the function that reads data from the map right here in maps.js. It doesn't necessarily belong here, but, you know. Um, and of course, sub is not what we're wanting. And it's going to pass, get past an object. And we're going to try doing this from scratch, because last time I was solving the wrong problem, so we, uh, we, really shouldn't, um, we really shouldn't go back to my previous example. And let's be a little sloppy here. The input object's going to create. So what the user's going to request is a rectangle of data. And the rectangle of data is going to be north lat, south lat, west long, east long, equals corners of request box. Now that's not all because they also want to get a resolution. So we're going to call that dlat, dlong for delta, um, the resolution in latitude and longitude that is being requested. Okay. Again, many ways to do this. Um, output object, um, 
we're going to send them a lot of stuff. For right now, we're going to send them um, data, which will be an array of the data to the request. We're also going to send them a little bit more information because we won't necessarily be able to get exactly what they want. But let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and write our loops here. So this is really very simple. We will say for lat uh, equals south lat, and we will allow less than or equal because if, you know we will give them both corners because they can do their own data sort of processing if they need to. Um, and then we'll say lat plus equals. And of course, this is going to be object south lat, object north lat. I'm going to move this over a little bit so we have a little bit more room here. That should be fine. And then object d lat. So this is a loop that basically loops through the latitude values. And then same thing for longitude. And I kind of wish I knew what I was doing. Okay. Longitude less than or equal to, um, oh, and I made a mistake here. Um, uh, actually, no, I haven't, but because uh, the south latitude will be smaller and the west longitude will be smaller, so we're actually fine. Uh, it's going to cause, cause a problem because our data is in um, the reverse order, which we don't actually mention here, but usually the data for 90 degrees latitude will come first, then 89, then 88. Uh, even though it's not being mentioned here, so uh, we'll we'll go ahead and just ignore that for right now, and then okay. For right now, why don't we just console log to see if we can make some requests and they actually work. Okay. So we will need to load maps into the index, and then we're going to make some read data from map requests. And I don't think we can do it. Actually, we probably could do it here. Um, is that ugly? Yeah, it is ugly, but that's okay. We, we don't have to worry about it. So read data from map. Very nicely, it is actually letting me do this. Um, <laughs> so let's say we want to, let's just do a really simple request. Um, the south lat will be minus 90, the north lat will be 90, the west longitude will be minus one. So this is the borough costing the whole thing. East longitude will be plus 180, and the d lat will be 5 degrees, and the um, d long will also be 5 degrees. So once I get this hooked into the main script, this should work. And it'll be very early in the process because, of course, we're doing it as, a, as an eval. So here we'll just say maps.js, and let's see if we get what we want. Nice. We did not. Home runner index.js line 80. So I might have left some garbage in from the last time. And yes, that is the garbage I left in. Let's try that again. Very nice. So the latitudes go the way we want. The longitudes go the way we want. Make sure here. Yeah, there's probably too many of them, but... Usually, if we're going to do mapping, it's going to be 256 by 256. So it is going to be a lot most of the time also but uh, for testing we can we can damp that down a little bit. So now let's try something that's not quite as obvious. Um, let's say we want to go from 34 to 36, minus 107 to minus 105, which you will recognize as being pretty close to where I live. D lat and D long. So this time we should only really expect to get 3 by 3 or about 9 results on the right hand side. And that is indeed what we are getting. So that's gorgeous. Okay. So now, of course, we're not getting any data from the map. We're just getting um, a bunch of, you know, we're just getting much of what the input coordinates are. So now here's where we, um, oh, I'm sorry. And one of the things you have to pass into the map, of course, is the map from which you want data. Otherwise, it's not very useful. So in this case, our map, we only have one map. Um, 
hidden. Okay. And it is the land use map. Um, so this tells us about the map sort of data. Uh, one thing we're going to worry about later on, and I'm going to just put a to-do here, uh, both OpenStreetMaps and Google Maps API, not Google Maps, if you go to their homepage, they now have a very nice sort of orthographic spherical map. But if you use their API, their maps are Mercator, which means uh, that the central latitude is, uh, the, the latitudes are not spaced evenly. And let me see if I can uh, get a... Um, Uh, apparently I cannot. Um, actually, it might just be get tile. Yeah. So you can see here, uh, this is actually a fairly... Let me zoom this out a little bit more. And uh, you'll see actually the there's two things about the Mercator map that are sort of weird. Okay, so now we have the whole world in one box. Um, west longitude minus 180, east longitude 180, not a problem. Um, oh, actually this won't work with this one, but um, Mercator maps, because they're infinite in the north-south direction, uh, Google Maps and OSM both cut them off at 85 degrees. So in this case, everything looks fine, not a problem. Zoom in one level now, and now you'll see for this northwest quadrant here, longitude goes from minus 180 to zero. That's minus 180 here, and zero here, not a problem. Equator to 90 degrees. Now, if this were linear, sorry, equator to 85 degrees. Now, if this were linear, this would be like 42 and a half degrees, roughly speaking. Um, but 42 and a half degrees is actually much further south. It's here in the, uh, in, here in the middle of the United States. So if you look here, the medium latitude is 66 degrees. Uh, that's because Mercator, um, as this is a known issue, Mercator sort of stretches out things that are further north. So Greenland looks very, very huge. Uh, compared to Africa, even though it's much, much smaller, and it even looks very huge compared to uh, Australia, or what they're calling Oceania, but it is Australia. Um, so, so this is uh, so when someone requests Mercator data, we cannot just give them evenly spaced latitudes and longitudes like we're doing here. Our latitude formula is a little bit different, not a huge deal, but it is something we need to keep in mind for for the future reference. Okay, so now what we need to do is figure out where in our uh, data file, which is given to us, we need to be looking. Now, there's going to be an issue here. Or is there? Um, yeah, let's figure out where in the data file it is. One issue is I don't want to be opening the data file um, each time. So we might want to, uh, we might want to rely on a file descriptor uh, being sent in or something. Well, I mean, we can define that uh, in, in a moment. Okay, so where will this data be? Well, we went through quite a bit of this stuff uh, last time, and we know that for um, we need to c basically compute rows and columns, uh, and then convert those convert that to bytes. So let row equal. Now let's see. Um, um, so the map is object map. And so what we want to do is we know that um, the uh, we want to start with the let's see the north data. So it's going to be like north data, which is um, ninety degrees minus lat. That tells you how many degrees down you are, and then. The maps, um, this is going to be off by a very small amount, but we can we can fix that. Um, and of course, uh, that this if it were just pure degrees, this would be fine. This would tell us that 45 is the 45th row, for example. 30 is the 60th row. But of course, uh, the uh, map has a del has a delta value that's smaller than that, and that's going to be uh, lat res. Object map lat. Whereas in the formula for um, longitude is going to be very similar, we do need to make a small correction to this. And lat long row. And it's a it's a very minor correction because we just um, we have that half offset. Okay. 
So this says that the uh, latitude 34 gives us this 1274 row, uh, gives us this 1251 row, and then went, and I have no idea if that's right or wrong because uh, I don't. Um, so now, of course, we can't, there, there are other issues here, but let's go ahead and pretend that we're getting data from 88 to 90. And by the way, 90 is going to be actually unavailable data, uh, but that's, that's also okay. So let's do this. Latitude 88, we're getting, let's see, latitude 90, we're getting row 0, which is sort of what we expect, but really latitude 90, um, the row is negative 1 half, because the very first, very first data point is, again, not 90, but it is, in fact, 90 plus this number over 2. So we are going to adjust this to be a row 1, 1.5, minus 0.5, I'm sorry. And that's just done simply by doing this. So now we see that 90 gives us row minus 0.5, which we will have to deal with because that is not a, um, that is not the, um, that is not a valid row, of course. Um, we will be rounding it, in fact. And we could just deal with, we could just deal with floors and ceilings, which would also work, but but we don't have to do, but we're just going to do it this way. So now let's see if, uh, let's just see here, 88 to 90. Let's make the, the uh, DLAT the same as our MAPS DLAT. If this is correct, now we should actually see it going up one row at a time um, instead of, uh, you know, how many of rows we had before. So let's see here, uh, latitude, mm -hmm. Okay, um, so not at all what we expected. Um, oh, I think I see what's wrong. Um, yeah, because we started at 88, which is not a full 180 over 4096 um, multiple from 90, this is what we're getting now. One thing I was hoping to do is um, have the latitudes go beyond the uh, uh, north latitude if necessary. In other words, we shouldn't stop short of it. Uh, we should stop um, beyond it if possible. And there is a way to fix that. Um, and let me see if we got the first latitude correct as well, because we might not have. Uh, row 45.001, okay. So the way to fix this is um, we start at the so southernmost latitude, but we let them go one half a delta down from there. So we w we're going to give them more data than they want. Um, actually, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Let's see. South latitude. Well, actually, you know what? Let's leave it the way it is right now. Um, Right. Um, let's worry about. Let's put that in a to-do list. Uh, worry about corner cases. Um, north, south, east, west, most point. Right now, we're just going to loop through what they give us, and if we can't give them data all the way, they'll have to deal with that. Okay. So now let's figure out the column. And we will restore DLAT to be 1, so we're not going to get into trouble. And so the column is going to be the longitude request minus the west data, which just happens to be minus 180. And again, we're going to be dividing by object map longitude resolution. And again, minus 1 half to, to because the leftmost is not really minus 180. It's just a little bit above minus 180. And this time I'm going to be a little bit clever and not, and have it go from minus 180, which we know what it should be, to, let's say, minus 178. So let's run this and see if we get what we expect. All right. Uh, yes, it would be nice if we printed the column, too. Okay. And let's see what we have here. Big mess. Um, 
column minus 0.5, which we expected. Then we'll go to 179, it's going to be a column number that's a lot higher than that. Um, and then let's see, row number, row number doesn't really matter here, column number 45, and then it should be column like 90 or something, uh, if we get that far. No, 45, oh, 22 and a half, 0, 22 and a half, 45, seems reasonable. Um, okay, and it actually just occurred to me that's probably not what we want, because... I mean, we do need to loop through the um, the data that they give us and basically try to replicate what they want. And we're doing that here. Uh, now, now, what we're going to do here is we need to, of course, com uh, combine the row and column number into a byte number in of landuse.bin, uh, which we can do because we know how many rows and columns there are. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and compute that. And again, this is plural, rows. We're ca calculating the total number of rows in the map, which we could have just given as, as part of our uh, input, but that's not too bad. The rows is going to be uh, n data minus s data over lat res. Uh, but this is going to be off by one because Well, let's console log it. And yes, I know I've used the wrong type of, print of uh, quotation marks. So, we'll just do that. Oh, 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 oh. It's not going to even compile. Oh, oh. Yeah. Of course, this is... Oh, yeah, rows 4096, which is correct. That is how many rows there are. They're numbered 0 to 4095, but there are 4096 of them. Now we'll wait, okay? And pretty much the same thing here. Let's make this look a little bit nicer. Call should be 8192. Although, again, uh, they're not numbered, there's numbered 0 through 8191. And apparently, it's decided it needs to rebuild itself for some reason. So, let's take a look here. And there we have it. Rose and columns have been computed correctly. Okay. So now, we need to compute the byte. And we did do need the value of, okay, so let byte equal, um, let's see, rows, columns. So number of columns times row, um, and we actually need to round these actually another way of rounding something is adding one half to it and then taking the floor so we might actually be able to do something sort of nice here and just say math floor without the minus one half so that looks a little bit cleaner and it has the same effect as rounding so that, that may be what I was trying to dig at last time, and I never got around to actually figuring out. Okay. So let bytes equals calls times... Well, actually... Let's see how that does in terms of giving us some numbers. Uh, yes, if I hadn't put this in here. Okay. Minus 180 is column 0, which is okay. Um, column 22, column 45, so it's 22.5, so we see that there's like a sort of a roundup here. 
And do we have it? Oh, good. We have the latitudes also set to very where we need them. Latitude 90 is going to be row 0. Latitude 9 is row 22 and then row 45. So 22.5 uh, rows or columns per degree here. Okay. And now, of course, the byte that we're going to find these at is... going to be the uh, number of columns. Um, let me do something here. Now both of them have to be between um, zero and the number of rows. If they're not, then we've actually we've actually found a um, we found a point where we can't return data and we will uh, we're gonna have something called the no data value, which means it's a it's a value that we return if the request is something we cannot fulfill. And the no data value actually does belong uh, up here in the in the map. Let me do, and um, and in our case we could probably just make it minus one for right now because obviously uh, our land use is goes, goes, you know, has only a finite number of values and they're positively or numbered zero or positive. So a minus one would work. Um, I'd hope to return the data in um, in sort of a binary format, so I didn't want to use minus one. We could have used 255 there. Um, but for right now, let's just say fix it. We're just going to put the no data value right now at minus one. So that says if we can't, if we can't provide you with data, we'll give you a minus one instead. Um, okay. So the byte is equal to number of columns times row plus call. And uh, let's see if we can get it to tell us where that's going to be. Um, the first three aren't terribly interesting, but uh, longitude... Yeah, here, 90 minus 180, that is correct. Uh, because that is the very top of the top left corner of the data file. Here we have column 24 and then we have, let's just see what happens here, column 22, so that's going to be 22 times 8192, which this does seem reasonable number for that. Okay, so that, let's see if that looks correct. It See. Right, which is actually um, it's actually the one eighty two two fifth byte, uh, just like zero is the first byte. Do we have yeah, there? It is byte zero. So okay, so this is fine. The first uh, four thousand, the first eight thousand one hundred ninety two um, bytes will represent the first, the highest latitude, which is eighty nine point uh, whatever it is. Is nine point? It's not nine five. It's eighty nine point something higher than that. But okay. Okay, so now we know uh, which which bytes we want to return. Um, but now what we're going to try to do is we're actually going to try to um, we're going to try to open the file and actually have this. Um, here's where it gets tricky, because the rate reading is going to be asynchronous, and we're going to have it um, we're going to have it console log for now. But at some point we actually need to say call a function called um, you know, then return or then end or something. Um, so we we um, and we can actually be a little bit more clever and read multiple bytes at a time, but let's not worry about that for right now. Um, so what we're going to do here now, we're going to sort of go back to what we had in the maps.js. Um, open the um, the land use, and uh, we're going to sign the FD after we open it because we that can change each time. So let's go back over here. I hope I've done this correctly. Uh, let's see. Words buffer fs read. Where's my fs open? Ah, uh, yes, here it is. Fs open. Um. And we can sort of do, um, hello lurks, good to see you again. Unless you're just a artificial user, I don't know. 
So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say fs open maps land use dot file name. And what we're going to call it, we're still going to call it, uh, I don't know if we can call it F1, um, because there's an F1 in index.js. So, should be able to use promises here and just say then, but apparently I cannot. Hmm. I'm beginning to wonder if I actually need... See what does F1 do here? Okay. I think this is what they call callback hell. Um let me see if there's a more promising way of doing this. Um Node.js file open promise. Well, it looks like at least someone has thought about that. Reading file with ES6 promises. Um. Ooh. Okay. Ugly. Okay. So we're gonna say read it, read open mode. Um then call function we'll call it H one and function H one Function H1 can do this, um, and let's see what that gets. Function H1 gets F1 in this case, H1 in our other case. Possible error message and a file descriptor. Okay. Um, we're not going to error check. Very bad. Don't just pretend you don't didn't hear that. And what we're going to do is we're going to assign the um, We're going to assign the file dir director of maps land use to FD, uh, and then when that's a that's a trivial operation that does not take a um, that does not take a uh, uh, that doesn't it, that's not asynchronous, and then we could say read data from map, blah blah blah. And at this point, we know that uh, the maps land use FD is defined. So what we can do here, finally, is actually read the data. Um, uh, let's see. Wow. This, this is ugly. Okay. So we're going to say file system read, and I think this is going to be okay because we've included file system before this. Um, object map FD. That's what we signed it to. Um, let's declare our buffer up here. And okay, and I've forgotten now what the uh, parameters are. So pretty sure I had that at one point. Here it is. So it's going to be the file descriptor, the buffer, the offset in the buffer, which we don't care about, the length 
and the position, which is going to be byte, and then the function to which we're going to call uh, once it has read something. Um, which we're going to call H1524. And then we're going to go ahead and log that, but it's going to be sort of asynchronous. Um, function H1520. We're going to have to clean this up a lot. I'm just sort of confused as to how we're going to be doing this right now. Um, I probably need to do a buffer alloc, actually. Let's see. Get error br buff. Um, and I think br is bytes red, so. So here, right now, we're just going to console log it. And I think this is going to be ugly because it's going to be a, um, a binary. But uh, And this should just be one byte at a time. We're, we're going to improve that in just a sec. OK, so now if this probably won't work. But if it does, it's going to read some bytes. Um, hopefully only about like nine of them from land use dot bin and and console log them more likely it's gonna fail yeah oh yeah because I need to do a buffer I don't know why we only need we really need one there but okay still doesn't like it okay Oh, I might need to put a let in there. Okay, not great. Uh, because it, the byte, I think, is not showing... The byte is not going to show as a byte. Um, and I think we can get fix that by doing... Um, and this one I don't know. JavaScript uh, chur to let's see if there's a chur. It's either chur or ASCII, and it is ASCII is the one I actually want from character code. Um, or actually chur code at. And unfortunately, it looks like we might have to worry about Unicode, but we're going to pretend that, that we don't. Um, um, oh, car code at meaning at the zeroth index of the string, which there's only one element here, so it's not a, not a huge deal. Okay, let's see what this does. Charcode at is not a function. No, of course it's not. Because we have a buffer, not an actual string here. So this is getting uh, pretty ugly. Okay, so buff car code at zero. Uh, we actually want a string there. Uh, I don't know if I can create a string. This is extremely awful. I don't know if I can create a string that's been... Um, that gets initialized from a buffer. Apparently I can. Uh, this code is too hideous to use, but it does say that the bytes in... Uh, land use stop bin are 23 and this is actually I think correct uh, these bytes are 23 I'm going to save this because it is working code okay um, now we can do something a little bit uh, a little bit nicer instead of going um, 
this thing here because the longitude range is fixed. We're going to read multiple bytes at a time. Um, so we're going to say, um, let's see, we want, and then we, we're going to have to do something more than just, because um, we really don't want to call this function uh, each time in just console log. We actually want to build up an array of these uh, these integers and return them at some point to the user. Um, so we will say, um, and there should be a way of doing all this magic using, what the hell did I just download? Oh yeah, okay. Um, there should be a way of doing this just using a promise instead of having to go through the sort of ugly, ugly callback hell kind of stuff here. Um, so now I have downloaded this, so we're, we're fairly safe here. Um, so let's pre-compute now the call start, which is this thing, the call ending position, and the uh, call delta. So, And that way we can actually just read uh, several columns at once instead of one call one byte at a time which is inefficient um, call, that call one and call one is going to be this thing for the westernmost requested longitude so here when LNG is obj west longitude Okay. Call two is going to be the same thing with, in fact, it's going to be so similar, I'm going to... Call two is going to be the same thing, of course, with the eastern longitude. Okay. And... Num calls is going to be... And the plus one is because of the fence post condition we discussed. We do want to get both the westernmost and easternmost, not just uh, not just the ones in the middle. So now, God willing, um, and actually I don't really need call two here, it's just sort of a convenience variable. Okay, so now instead of just reading one byte at a time, we're going to do this. Still need to test that the call one and call two are within range, but that's okay. Byte equal um, we'll call it byte one, just to be consistent, equals number of total calls, that's still, that's still the same, times row plus call one, okay, and that's the starting column, the starting byte of the data we want for this given latitude. And then here we can say read num calls and then call each, each 1524. And here, um, let's do this. This is going to just make sure I haven't messed anything up seriously. Um, byte is not defined. Oh, yeah. Call is not defined. Why not? Um, no need to print it. Oh yeah. So I'm having more trouble printing out stuff than, than actually doing this. Okay. Read 46 bytes. Good. 23, of course, is not, not what we really want. We want... Um, I wonder. This is almost definitely going to fail. If I can just turn the buffer into an array directly. No, apparently not. Oh, maybe it has to be a typed array or something. Did we look at that earlier? Um, 
Okay, I thought at some point we had tried to convert the um, the buffer into a into an array of ints, and it should be doable. All right, let's see if we can. Buffer to int array. Okay. Um, now this is nice because actually that pushes what we're actually going to be doing. Um, so we can either assign it just from a buffer like that. Um, or we can we can just push it to our array, and pushing is what we want because at some point we're going to return the whole thing. And I need to close some some tabs at some point. Okay. And of course, all of this code needs to go back into this index. It's just here right now for. Um, so now. I'm going to regret this. I'm going to put the array over here. And then every time this little subroutine gets called, we're just going to say and this is going to become fairly ugly in the sense it's not going to compile. Let's see. Unexpected token. And maybe I am doing this. Oh, it's it's parentheses. It's not a bracket. So now if this works, we actually sort of have what we want. Wow, it's a lot of freaking zeros there. Maybe too many. So that's bad because, of course, I expected some 23s in there and I'm not getting. Oh, wow, I'm getting some 23s in there and then a whole bunch of zeros, so I'm not fully following that. Okay. So. So what we're seeing here is. Um, Hmm. Now you almost wonder if you could pass in an array of bytes to a function um, and then have the function do all the work, because this is right now basically trying to read in um, this is trying to read in a bunch of, of bytes in a loop and then do something with them as opposed to just sending an array of the bytes uh, byte positions to another function, have it sort of do all the reads uh, and then just return something or then call another function. So let's see if we can do something with this. Um, and so really, I think we should somewhere in here uh, have a, a have a then. So this is an, uh, f a file system read. Uh, you know, read the da data that you want. The problem is it doesn't return immediately, and we shouldn't have to call a function. We should just be able to say then, um, and then you know call the um, push onto the array. The problem is, of course, once we do that, and we're done with this loop, how do we know that we've read all the bytes? Um, because there's no synchronicity there. We just uh, we read the bytes, we send them to this array. Um, and I guess we could even worry that um, they're not going to show up in order, uh, which is bad, because we do want them, to obviously, to be in order. Um, okay. 
Okay, I think I'm stuck here. And I um, think I'm going to call the stream for today. And uh, hopefully we can figure this out more uh, next time. Bye for now.